Ah, uh, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Now, you may be regretting clicking on this tutorial because after all, it's just about strokes and how interesting can they be? Well, the answer is they can be pretty stinking interesting. But before we jump into it, our sponsor for today is graphicsdoc.com. They've got a library of royalty-free images and graphics and vectors, well over 300,000 strong. You can sign up this month only, April of 2016, and get the Creative Rewards Month special, right, for the Tutvid viewers. It's $39 for six months of access to the library. You can download and use whatever you want from the library. Even after your subscription goes away, you can continue using Vectors Illustrations Photos photos from the graphicsdoc.com library. So if you're cruising the internet at night thinking about your ex-girlfriend, you can download Heartbreak Sad Man in the full glorious vector EPS from graphicsdoc.com. We're not talking about heartbreak though. We're talking about strokes in Photoshop. So let's see what we can do with strokes. Uh, first and foremost, if we just create a selection, something like this, we can right click within the selection and hit the stroke option. And that brings up the stroke dialog box, which maybe you've never used. And if you have, I, I don't blame you because most people don't. We're gonna choose a color here. We'll just go with straight white, hit okay. We can set a width to the stroke, right? Let's make it uh, large and in charge at 25 pixels. Then we can choose a location. So the location of the stroke Outside means the stroke is going to be placed on the actual outside of the uh, selection. Inside would be the inside, and center just means it straddles the selection. Um, now, if you want sharp corners, you want to go with inside. Outside and center are going to give the edges or the 90 degree angles, excuse me, of your stroke. It's going to make the corners rounded. So just know that that's something that's going to happen. You can also set a blend mode, maybe overlay. Let's do that. That could be interesting. Um, and we're going to go inside so we get nice sharp corners. Hit OK. And you can see I can hit Command or Control D to deselect. And we have this nice stroke that was just placed. Now, it's just pixel based and it's just here on this layer. So it's not really the best way to create a stroke. I'm going to go Command or Control Z and then uh, Command Option or that would be Control Alt. Z a couple times to just undo and step backward to get rid of all that stuff. The other way that we can apply a stroke is by creating an object. So let's say we make a square here um, and I'll just fill it with black because I can. Um, and we could go layer, layer style, stroke. This is the other way to apply a stroke. So whoop, I have selected the wrong layer. Well, actually I didn't put our square up on its own layer, so let's create a new layer. And we'll just name it square, whatever, and we'll fill that, deselect, Commander Control D, and again, go layer, layer, style, stroke. You can see here, we've got this nice 90 pixel white stroke uh, positioned on the inside of our box. See, if I go outside, you can see, boom, those rounded corners I talked about, and they really kind of fall apart. They're very like staggered and steppy when you get to, you know, 90 pixels. Uh, you can set whatever size you want. Now, the cool thing about the layer style is, well, there's a bunch of cool things about it. Number one, you can change the opacity just like we could before. We're going to leave it up at 100. Um, you can change the blend mode so you can actually get a live preview. Oh, there's what overlay looks like. Cool. What does soft light look like? All right. It's kind of a little, it's a little bit different. Hard light. What does that do? All right. It's pretty much just white um, and so on and so forth. You can go color dodge, see what that does. Nothing. Um, and you can just play around with what you have there. But you have fill type. So this is the fill of the stroke, not the fill of the object to which you're applying the stroke. So we can choose fill type and we can set pattern or gradient. Um, let's go with gradient and you'll see, you can see it just gives this a gradient. So essentially it just looks like this uh, stroke is sort of fading out of our box, which is kind of cool. If we set the position to inside, it looks even cooler. And um, of course you can choose any color gradient you want, maybe this metallic-y sort of gradient or you know blue and white, whatever, hit okay. And of course you can still go with a blend mode here of like overlay and see what that looks like um, or whatever. You can just mess around with it. There's a lot of neat stuff you can do. Um, and the beauty of this layer style stroke is, well, you can always double click on your FX icon, obviously, and edit it. You can, as of, I think it's Photoshop CC 2015, maybe it was 2014, you can add multiple strokes. So I can add the stroke and I can like make one even bigger, maybe put it on the outside and I could set it to like a 0% angle or a 0 degree angle, excuse me. So the gradient is moving side to side instead of up and down. You can see our original gradient is still in there. So that's kind of cool. Maybe set the blend mode to like multiply or something. I don't know, whatever. Hit OK. Now, because it's a layer style, it's live. So we can always go back and edit it like I just, sh uh, like I just showed you. But you can also hit Command or Control T, edit your original shape 
and the layer, uh, the layer stroke will automatically update. So it's always going to update depending on the artwork on that layer. So that's just a quick overview of the stroke layer style. Now for the cool part of the tutorial, and maybe I should have done this first so you didn't have to listen through all that stuff. But if we, we can, uh, if you create a shape or a path of any sort with any of these path or vector shape tools, um, or of course the path, you can apply a stroke to paths in very, very interesting ways. So let's go ahead here and just draw it a nice big circle. All right, so something like that. We've just created a path. So if we go to our paths panel, boom, there's the path. There's really no artwork on a layer here. We're going to create a new layer, so we're stroking on a new layer. Now what we can do is grab our brush tool. Let's check to see what we have. We have an 80 pixel soft edged brush. You see that right there? So check this out. If we go paths, and we can do this a number of ways. We can, with any one of the, our, our shape or pen tools, we can just right click. Whoops. I actually click, clicked, right click and choose stroke path. Uh, over here in the paths panel, we can right click and choose stroke path, or we can choose just the stroke path button down here at the bottom of the paths panel, and it's gonna stroke our path. Now that, that path looks very funky. I'll show you what's going on. If we right click uh, on our path and choose stroke path, look at this. First of all, we have this interesting feature to simulate pressure. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's shut that off for now. But you can choose from so many different tools. I mean, think about this. You could draw paths over every contour and feature in your model's face and body and then dodge and burn strictly by stroking paths that you've drawn. You can smudge. You can use a healing brush. You can use the clone stamp tool um, or, of course, a pencil and the brush. Now, because we're just we're going to keep it simple here with the brush because we can do a lot of stuff with the brush. Now, if we hit OK... It's just going to stroke a simple, what was our brush set to, 80 pixels, 80 pixel soft edged brush all the way around. If I deselect the path, you can see we just have that, that nice little ring. I'm going to undo that to get rid of the ring. We're going to select our work path again. Um, we're going to change our foreground color to something a little bit more interesting, maybe like a bright green color. And now we're going to go up to our brush options. I'm going to tick on shape dynamics. I want to make sure that control is set to pen pressure. Do this even if you don't have a tablet, you don't have a stylus of any sort, there's no reason you need to worry about pressure. Just tick on pen pressure, leave the size jitter set to zero. Check this out. I'm going to close this. We're going to go back to the path. We're going to right click, choose stroke path. We're going to choose to simulate pressure. Hit OK, and you can see it starts very narrow at sort of our, our lead anchor point here, and it zips all the way around and then fades back to sort of nothing. That's pretty cool. There's another thing we can do here that's pretty neat as well. I'm going to select the path again. We're still on our, our layer. We're going to open up our brush options. Um, we can choose to apply scattering, right, which is going to give us this crazy scattered effect. Go to brush tip shape, increase the spacing quite a bit. We can just get sort of all these dots of light. Um, let's check to see what that looks like. That might be interesting. Let's just hit the stroke uh, path icon down here. We have that simulate brush pressure setting turned on. Boom, we just get all these nice little dots. We can hit it again and just keep multiplying the dots on top of each other over and over and over and over again. I'm going to undo that a bunch of times. There we go. I'm going to tick off scattering though, and I'm going to close up my spacing quite a bit, set it all the way to 1% in fact, and I'm going to tick on transfer. So transfer, and again, I just have opacity jitter. I'm not turning it up at all. I have it all the way down at zero, but I've turned control to pen pressure. Very important. I'm going to close that again. Now what I'm going to do, I'll right click, I'll go stroke path, and here we're going to choose brush, simulate pressure, hit OK, and you can see not only are we simulating the pressure as far as size, but transfer is fading it from 0% opacity to 100% opacity back to 0% opacity. So we have this nice sort of, I don't know, weird halo-y effect that we've created just by stroking a path here in Photoshop. So stroking paths in Photoshop, um, you can you can apply strokes to selections like we've done and objects. There's so many different things you can do with the stroke feature in Photoshop. You should really check it out, play with it. You can, uh, there's nothing else I can say. What else can I say? I'm gonna stop talking. For the stroke feature in Photoshop, that's it. Get it, got it, good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.